Most good believers do not know how to activate their angels because of wrong, false, or religious teaching. Demons who should be losing are taking advantage of this lack of knowledge and prematurely aborting believers' destinies, or worse. This changes today. <laughs> Welcome, Holy Spirit. You are our most important guest. My guest here, though, is Joseph C. He just wrote a new book teaching secrets about activating the unseen and angelic world to fight on your behalf. Few even realize the truths simply stated in this book. Angels are our servants of fire, but they only respond, and get this, they only respond through human voice activation and by you only speaking God's words. Joseph, you say angels are voice activated? Oh, that's right. God has put in his word how things operate. There's a kingdom, there's principles. Angels are activated by the voice of God. Their voice activated, not by our voice, by his voice. And so a better way to say this is Psalm 29. It says that angels are divided or the flames of fire are divided by the voice of God. That means when they go out and rank and file and they're doing what they're supposed to do, it is God that commands them to go. Now the unique part is when we take the word of God, his written word, we put it in our mouth, we speak it out in faith, in prayer. I'll tell you, angels hear that and they snap to attention, Sid, and they get work done that way. And also, we don't know where angels come from entirely. The Bible doesn't really say, but we know our God is a consuming fire, Sid, and they are flames of fire, fiery servants to the heirs of salvation. I believe that voice of God, that, that pros looking into the face of the Father, when Jesus is the Word made flesh and God is speaking out His Word through the Son, I believe angels, they just activate with that. When we put the voice of God in us and speak the Word, those flames of fire that come right out of the very presence of God, I believe, just act and do exactly what they were designed for, to serve uh, heirs of salvation, you and I. They go get the job done. Joseph. Tell me about the very first time you remember in which you encountered an angel. Oh my goodness, Sid, I, I got a few of these, but one in particular, I was a younger minister and I was uh, in the moment casting out a demon. I had a witch and we're in this, uh, this setting and a few of us are in there and we're trying to cast this demon out, trying to cast it out. And this thing is going full Hollywood on us, <laughs> demonstrative. <laughs> it's like a young lady, she started to speak with the voice of a trucker, I'll get you, you know? <laughs> and, and we're going through this scenario and I just, I, I began to call in the name of the Lord, I began to try to bind this thing and suddenly, the Word of God came alive in me. Because at that time, I'd been going through the whole New Testament like once a week, reading it, listening to it. And I began to quote like Psalm 91. I began to quote different scriptures. And suddenly when I said, the angels take charge concerning me and this girl, and I took authority, this witch got starfish to the ground. It looked like somebody Velcroed her to the ground. Bam, she's laying there, she's like, mm. And suddenly, the demon screamed out of her. She couldn't move, she couldn't do anything. And previous to that, she was attacking us, Sid. And she got delivered because I believe angels interfered with those nefarious plans. Now, when you saw the power of the Word of God against the demonic, yeah. did this open you up to have more faith when you pray for deliverance? Oh, big time. Deliverance, healing, any of it. And I'll tell you, Sid, I, angels seem to gravitate to the obedient, to the, the Word of God. And I was in one setting. I left a, a restaurant. I walk outside of this restaurant. There was a man sitting on the curb. I looked at him and I said, hey, um, or the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me as I was looking at him and said, you need to give that man everything in your wallet. You know, being the Holy Ghost man I was, I left. <laughs> I, I was like, hey, I don't know if I want to that do that. That must be the devil. Yeah. That can't be God. <laughs> so I, I get in the car, I drive away, but I sense the conviction of the Spirit. Go back, go back. So my wife Heather and I, we went back. And I walked up to this man. He's sitting on the curb. I emptied my wallet, gave, gave it to him. 
And he was a very handsome African-American man. And he stood up when this happened, Sid. And he began to laugh. And then he looked at me and said, your father is so pleased with you. You're going to have a ministry. You will go around the world. These things will begin to happen. And, and maybe it's my mind's eye, but he seemed like he was like seven feet tall, Sid. And he starts hugging me. He had big dreadlocks. And it was a profound moment. I believe it was an angel. Because when we left, I look back as the stories go, and he was gone. It was a tremendous experience. Now, tell me about the storm, Angel. Oh, my goodness. We were at a conference. We're at this prophetic conference enjoying things, my wife and I, a few friends. And as we're driving back, we're going down the freeway, and we suddenly came into a storm cell, like a wall of water. And when this is happening, I'm looking around, and it seemed like we drove into a tornado. It was that intense, just intense wind, intense rain. And then it was like there was lightning and everything taking place all at the same time. And suddenly we call out to Jesus, the storm is happening, and boom, we're on the side of the storm. We blasted out of the storm. And I know for a fact there was angelic intervention. You just, you could sense it, and suddenly we were one place, and then we were in another. We'd plowed right through that storm, and it was powerful for me. It really impacted me when it involves prayer and how we are to call in the name of the Lord. I believe angels are activated when we call out in faith on the name of the Lord. It's really interesting. We're here right now. We're in this setting. Many people are watching. You're listening. And I have a sense of the power of God right here on set during this broadcast. I sense the Holy Spirit is releasing a power for healing in this place. You look directly at the people when you do that. I believe there is many of you watching right now, and I'm talking about angels. We're in the middle of this narrative, and I sense the power of God wanting to touch your life. As a matter of fact, there's somebody, and I began to sense intense pain, like intense pain in your midsection, in your body, almost wanting to double you over, and the Spirit of the Lord is saying, that stops now. That stops right now in the name of Jesus. I release angels according to Psalm 91, Psalm 103, and I send those fiery servants to minister to the heirs of salvation right now. And I command the pain to leave you, anxiety leave you. There is a healing of traumatic stress that's leaving somebody right now over crisis. Sid, the power of God is touching someone right where they are. You're going to feel pain leaving your body I don't have right pain, now. but I feel the power of God Ooh, touching me. <laughs> there is pain right now leaving the body. There's an anointing lifting this off of you. I believe angels are coming into compliance and agreement with this word. Cancer, you leave them right now. You get off their body in Jesus' name. I see a person's eye. You have one eye that is completely, uh, it's deteriorated, and the Spirit of the Lord is bringing wholeness to that, and strength is manifesting in your eye. Angels are backing that up by the word of the Lord, and they are bringing order to that and wholeness to this area of your body. Strength is happening, even here in our studio audience, and those of you watching right now. The power of God is being released. An unbeliever is watching this, and healing is entering your body right now. The Lord is proving his presence to you. He is proving that he is Lord, and he's touching you right now. I sense the power of God lifting that off your life. And the Lord is saying, I love you, and I am real. I am real. Hallelujah. Oh, Sid, the power of God. I, I tell you, Joseph C. met, listen to this, the angel for America and the angel for Israel and found out the number one strategy the devil will use to destroy America, totally unknown by our government. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. I want to share with you the resource we're making available to you. My brand new book, Servants of Fire, Secrets of the Unseen War and Angels Fighting for You. Angels are some of the most unused forces that exist in God's kingdom because they're not properly accessed and they're not properly engaged. Did you know angels don't just arbitrarily do things for you? Angels have to do what they hear. You speak out the Word of God in faith, you pray the Word of God. When they hear the voice of God audibly, in this world through a free moral agent like you, and suddenly angels will activate. They go and do what God has assigned them to do according to his word. 
When you put the Word of God in your mouth, angels go to work for you. But there's many more things in this book. There is a mystical spirit that wants to get into the church, and I call it Christian mysticism. We begin to deal with that. This prophetic book that is actually a last day's prayer manual packed with information. But the best part about it, the whole last chapter is dedicated to scriptural prayers that will help you take ground, that will show you point by point how to pray the Word of God and access or activate angels on your behalf. The power of heaven is available for you. Now is the hour, now is the time. Get Servants of Fire. My exclusive CD, Prophetic Insight for 2024 and Beyond, is filled with revelatory information. I believe we're headed into a time of challenge, of pressure, of difficulty, and I have a lot of specifics that I want you to see and hear to give you hope. And I'm looking right now at the things that are coming in this coming year. I've seen things that are going to begin to open up fresh revelation, even in the middle of darkness. A man or woman with a revelation is never at the mercy of a culture gone mad. You don't have to shrink back. You don't have to be afraid. God has called you to be more than a conqueror at this time. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But to be forewarned, you need to begin to say to the darkness, I have faith no matter what's coming, and it's gonna be all right with me and my household. I believe in prophetic insight for 2024 and beyond will bring information that brings peace. You are to walk in a revelation of how to overcome in this present evil age. We now return to It's Supernatural. I'm here with Joseph C. And what is it about us humans? We like to go to extremes. We do. Angels. Yes. Tell us some extremes to avoid. Well, the extremes that happen, you know, I liken it this way, Sid. The devil couldn't beat the church, so he did the next best thing. He tried to join it. He tried to become part of things. He tried to influence. And then religion tries to come in and label things. And there's this saying that goes, metaphors reign where mysteries reside. And instead of looking at the Word of God, what it actually says and how we should function, people have to come up with sensational scenarios and ideas and stories and clouds without water that don't lead to anything. And this happens chronically in the area of angels. When we're talking about angels, we realize they are ministering spirits, fiery servants to the heirs of salvation. A lot of times people say, oh my goodness, they almost get into a point where they worship angels. They take it to such an extreme where every five minutes they're with an angel and angels taking them somewhere. The people have been to heaven, you know, five times per day, which I think is awesome. But I'm from Colorado and many people say, oh, I've been to heaven and today they had brownies up there. And I like to say, what was in those brownies? And, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, being a little bit funny, I believe in the supernatural, I experience it all the time. But we also have to stay in a biblical foundation with these things so we can bring order to it. The extremes are so craving the supernatural that you miss the spirit. So craving the things that are sensational that you miss the real supernatural. And then the other side is people completely dismiss supernatural encounters altogether. They dismiss angels. They dismiss all of it. Those two extremes are both wrong. We need to go into the highway of holiness, the middle ground, which is the word of God. And 1 Corinthians 4, verse 6, it says, learn from us to not go beyond what is written. And we'll never get into error then. And angels will operate properly, and you won't have to worry about angels of light, false entities. Because I think a lot of times, Sid, there's false entities that will appear to people that are so open to anything that they're not in the Word of God that angels of light could actually deceive people and they believe they're having some supernatural encounter and they're really getting led down the fairy tale path towards wandering and mis, uh, misled. I believe that the real raw spiritual horsepower that will bring lasting change is when you take the Word of God with the Spirit and you have order and strength and that will have lasting change and people will go the distance. You, you just used a word. A lot of people misunderstand the strength of angels. Yeah. Comment. Oh my goodness. Well, Jesus, you know, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And as he was there, they said, oh Lord, you know, just basically save yourself was kind of the, the air in the moment. And Jesus said, don't you know I could call on more than 12 legions of angels? 
And I'm very grateful to my friend Rick Renner who broke this down. He's just a wonderful scholar. But 12 legions of angels is a massive amount of force. One legion is like 6,000 of them. And if you put that together, 12 of them is 72,000 angels. If Jesus had called on 72,000 angels, it would have wiped out the planet Earth like several times over. And you find that interesting, the power of angels. Now, just one angel killed like 180-something thousand people in one night alone. So when you understand the, the force and the power behind these entities, man, it is something else. But when we do it by the Word of God, we can really access that. Uh, tell me about the voice you and your wife heard while doing a live video. This was really intense. Uh, this was in 2019, and I, I broadcast every single morning, and I, I go live, I'm, I'm there, and on this particular broadcast, I had done two weeks of teaching on our live broadcast about the very things we're talking about right now, about how to access angels properly through the Word of God. And, and said, in that moment, I finished. Right at the end of the broadcast, I began to feel an anointing. I closed the broadcast out, and I have to tell you, the room changed. And the room began to just shift. Things began to take place. I felt the power of God, a holy reverence and fear of God came in the room like I have never experienced in my life. And then, a voice spoke from behind me, and it blasted through my being. And the voice said, I come to you from the very throne of God. And then he said, the great God Jehovah does not need you as much today as he needs you more after the 2020 election. I have great need of you. You're going to go live every single weekday morning, and there's going to be things that oppose you. And he went down, he told me many things, and then said, prepare. You got to prepare your team. You got to stand up, and you got to be ready for what is coming next. Now you said your wife was in there at the same time. She was. Did she feel what you felt? She felt it. She didn't hear the voice, you know, because I Scripture says some thought an angel had spoke, others thought it thundered. Right. Right. I believe that she did not hear anything because we talked about it, but she felt the presence of God and the holy reverence. She was also filled with tears. I was. I was nearly screaming, Sid, because it was so intense. And she was dramatically changed by it also. Did it dramatically change you? It did because the Lord spoke to me through his messenger. He gave me marching orders for the season that was to come. And I thought, wow, the Lord is talking to me about right now. And what an interesting thing to hear. You are not needed as much now, but you will be needed after the 2020 era. And I began to recognize that picture. And then I saw things coming. He told me specific events about individuals that were in my life and how to navigate it. And we did so. And it played out just as the message. When you say navigate, there were good people in your life and yes, bad people that's in correct. your life. Okay. That's correct. And he, he warned me about them. He said, here's what you're going to do. And here's how you're going to navigate this. And we did. And it went just like that. And I'll tell you, it was wonderful what took place. And I believe God was preparing us for a future to stand up against some of the coming onslaught of darkness we're facing right now. It's almost like we put our mouth guard in and said, OK, it's prison rules. <laughs> you know? we, we got really serious about it because of that warning and that direction. Now, people are reporting very supernatural things that are happening to them when they read your new book. Yeah. Tell me one that comes to mind. Well, people are reading it, and it's because it's so biblically based. We go to the Bible. I don't tell sensational stories just to tell them. I take it to the Word of God because they get lasting results. One person commented and said, I read your book, and I had my very first trance reading this book. You know, and it's a book that takes us right to the Word of God, tells the stories about angels, but it unlocks something in people the way God intended. You know, it's measurable, it's powerful, and people are having trances, visions, breakthroughs, and I believe we're going to get more and more stories about real angelic encounters that set people free. Well, out of curiosity, was there a story behind the story as to why you wrote that book? It was because of that angelic encounter. Because of that, it's you because wanted of that. to research. I, yeah, I actually, the publishers came to me and they said, hey, Joseph, why don't you go ahead and just write us a little booklet on angels? And I thought, okay, I'll write you a booklet. I began to put uh, hands to the keyboard, and that book just took off. It just, I couldn't stop writing it. I felt the unction of the Holy Spirit 
asking me to write when, it. When you say you could stop writing it, are you saying you didn't struggle? It just came out like a it prophecy? Came out, yes, it came out. It's a prophetic book, Sid. It came out like a prophecy. I got into the book of Enoch, right-sizing some of the points of view on that. We talked about angels' desire to look into salvation the way we have it. They're curious, I believe. We get into the final chapters of the book where we start showing you how to pray angelic prayers that break you through, meaning scriptural prayers that release angels. And I'll tell you, it is a powerful thing that we saw so many people begin to turn and have a solid walk with the Lord regarding the supernatural. Yeah, you know, as you're talking, I'm getting a word of knowledge. And let me tell you what it is. There are people that have problems in their fingers. I saw fingers that perhaps were bent mm. over, straightening out. Yes. Fingers that perhaps have pain from arthritic type conditions being healed instantly. And I also, when I said that, have you noticed, Joseph, you get to a second word, and I know you have a word, uh, but I also heard backs. Now, I'm going to give you a trade secret, up to you if you want to follow it or not, but 50-plus um, years of ministry, listen to what I have to say. You have a backache? Will you demonstrate some faith? Well, how do I do that? Stand up and bend over. Come on. That's how you know you're healed. Faith without corresponding action is dead, dead. You had a word. Sid, I'm looking at you. I, I'm here today looking at you, a father in what God's called so many people to do, a beacon. I have a word for your partners. And the word is, as they're partnering with you, I see breakthroughs coming in their businesses. I see breakthroughs coming with chains of containment. I see breakthroughs coming in their destiny and vision. I see lost children suddenly getting a revelation. And I'm telling you, the seed that they've put into you and what they will put into you, there is coming a return and you can't bury seed. And there is a supernatural calling to many people, specifically over resources in dark times. I see provision in difficulty to those that are linked to you, to those that are linked to this broadcast, to those that are partnering with this ministry. I sense it so mightily in you. There is a supernatural provision because people don't even know the level of things you do for the body of Christ out there. And I'm telling you, this is hot ground with the Holy Spirit and he wants to break people out of their containment. And I sense more and more testimonies from this moment forward where people will begin to say, I've had a financial revolution, not just a miracle. I've had a provisionary revolution. Something broke loose in my life. And I see a river of increase coming to open up even more avenues and floodgates for the message of its supernatural, the message of Sid Roth, and the legacy media that will come out of this ministry. And your partners will benefit from it in the name Thank of you. Jesus. But there's something, something urgent I want you to benefit from this second. This second instantly. There are many of you that watch me that have taken knowing Jesus for granted. Yeah. Your, your life insurance policy, if you will, to get to heaven. You haven't put any more than your little toe in the water. It's time for you to enter in. Repeat this prayer out loud with me. Mean it to the best of your ability and move rather than be stagnant you see, when you're stagnant, you're, you're going backwards and you don't even know it. It's time to get unstuck. Yes. Repeat this prayer with me and mean it to the best of your ability. Out loud. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that Jesus died for every one of my sins. Thank you that Jesus died for every one of my sins. And because of his blood, I'm clean. I'm clean, and you remember my sins no more. And, my sins no more. And, now and now that I'm clean, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior, but I make you my Lord, the Lord of everything. The Lord of everything. Sid Roth, and I have to tell you, we just finished three of the most amazing It's Supernatural shows, 
And I can't wait to hear, and uh, you know, I've got a vested interest. I can't wait to hear what God showed you. He had a vision of the angel of America and a vision of the angel of Israel. Wow, what a combination. Yeah. So, Joseph, tell me about the angel of Israel <laughs> and the angel of the United States. Thank you, Sid. I will. Praise Jesus. I'll tell you, it's a great honor not only to be here, but I sense the power of God right here in the studio. Those of you joining us, please, if you would, give us your attention for the sake of the Lord, because I believe God's going to touch many of you through this time, and it's going to be tremendous. I I want to start very quick. I'm going to get a running start at that vision because it was back in 1997 when I visited the Brownsville Revival. And I was in the Brownsville Revival and been there for a week. And of course, that's where Dr. Brown uh, is from and many avenues there. And as I was in that place, in the glory, in the presence of the Lord, upon leaving that meeting, uh, being in saturated by the glory of God, I stepped out, got onto a bus. And as I was getting onto the bus, I was suddenly caught up like out of my body. I was no longer where I was. I think I was sitting down at the time. I sat down next to a, a family member. And as this took place, suddenly I was in a different location, a completely different area. I'm standing there and everything I could see in this whole different location was all made out of stone and concrete as far as I could see it with my eyes. I'm looking in every direction, seeing stone pavement, stone trees, stone buildings. Everything was concrete. And then the spirit of the Lord led me to look in my hand and I looked in my hand and I saw a very small white seed in my hand. And I heard the words, throw the seed in this trance I was caught up in. I did so. I took it and I threw the seed. It arced up in the air. And when it came down, this seed hit the ground with the force of several tons it hit this concrete ground and it broke it up like a cone shaped explosion. I don't know, maybe 20 feet across dirt flew up from underneath. I saw this happen and I stepped back and I thought, what did I just witness? And it was so real. It was palpable. What was happening? I saw this take place. I looked at this and I said, what am I looking at? And I heard a voice say, so shall your words be to the hearts of men. And suddenly after that, I came back to where I was and I'm sitting on the bus and I have my cousin who was with me. I looked at him and he's like, what's up? I'm like, what's up? <laughs> and the bus left. But I was altered because of being in the presence of God to that magnitude. I believe those days are not going to just invade hot spots. I believe those days are going to invade the nations. I believe they're going to invade the nations through willing vessels and the fallow ground that has been so crusted over is going to burst forth by the inspired word of God spoken through clear eyed, clear minded, convicted people that know what they're talking to. And I believe there's going to be a breakthrough that happens in the hearts and lives of men, women, families. And we're going to see it like a tremendous avalanche of glory that I believe is wanting to invade the land right now, right now. So it was just recently where I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma preaching. It happened to be uh, during the same week uh, that there was a number of celebrations happening. Um, I woke up on September 16th. And as I did, I woke up in the morning as I was preaching there. And when I did, I woke up having gone to sleep in Tulsa. I woke up in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. In the spirit. Some of you are like, did you get translated, Joseph? No, I woke up in the spirit. I woke up and I'm looking around me and I began to see that I was in Las Vegas, Nevada. And when the spirit of the Lord began to speak to me, I heard these words. What will happen in Vegas or what's happening in Vegas will not stay in Vegas. And I said, what is happening in Vegas? And I had to go look. There was a cyber assault taking place at that exact time as I had this vision. Then he said in that same moment, look with me over to Israel. And I began to see something taking place with Israel. Now, in that moment, there was a number of events and he said, Israel will march and they will march against their enemies and it will be an unprecedented action for them and the nations. And I went live and said that on September 16th, right from our broadcast. And that was three weeks before this happened. Now there's a second part to that, that I'm going to come back to. And now I want to go all the way to the year 2020 during the pandemic. 
During the pandemic, many of us who are in isolation were trying to work through the process and realizing the world was under an assault by the Antichrist agenda. Right? Wasn't that a fun time? Everybody remember where you were during the pandemic? Yeah. I, we're going through this assault from the Antichrist agenda, and I'd been praying and I'd been interceding over the United States, over the nations, over what is happening in the world right now. Lord, what does this mean? Where is this at? What is taking place? And in that moment, as I was interceding, I began to be caught up in a revelatory encounter. I began to see the nation of America. I was pulled back in a distance. I saw the nation, the United States, and on the United States, an entity was standing. And as I looked at this entity, it was a figure. I realized it was an angel and its name was red, white, and blue. And I'm seeing this take place now. We know in part, we prophesy in part, we see symbolically, uh, we just see these things. And the Lord speaks to us through these type of metaphors, visions, experiences. So I'm looking at this angel standing on the United States. There was one moment I recognized as it was standing, this angel was all alone. There was no one else standing with the angel. The angel was there looking kind of to each side. And then I noticed that one foot was on the land in the beginning, both feet were on the land, but there came a point. One foot was on the land. Another foot was in the sea of this angel. And as this was unfolding and unpacking in this vision experience, I noticed the right side of the angel that there was another entity and there was a color scheme beginning to manifest to me. And the colors were white and blue, white and blue. And it was another angel. So now I'm seeing two angels in this vision. And I saw the angel of the United States. And I saw what I believe is the angel of Israel. And it was the angel of white and blue. And they were standing. And the Lord began to minister to me and say, as long as there's an honor and a connection between this angel of red, white, and blue to the angel of white and blue, America will stand. Because of the covenant blessing on that angel, America will continue. America will go forward. If America decides to break rank or dishonor that relationship to this angel, America will go through very difficult days or fall completely. And so I began to see this setting and I saw it beginning to become more and more faded and then strengthened and faded and strengthened between the two. And I believe right now we are in a moment and a valley of decision. I saw that in 2020 that began to happen. And then coming back to the vision I had on September 16th, what I had seen is after I saw Israel marching and going out in an unprecedented manner, then I heard the words at the other side of this, when this comes to its conclusion or on the end of this, whatever that means on the other side of this event and issue, I saw a mighty uprising and the spirit of the Lord beginning to move in a revival manner. Like we have not seen before. I saw this beginning to come across the land. I saw an uprising in people standing up in a supernatural way. And we're going to begin to see that. I believe somewhere in this mix. Now, as surely as there is that prophetic word, Decapolis, 10 cities burning at the same time, I have to tell you, the Lord is also raising up a response. How many of you know that the darkness is getting darker and darker? So dark, so difficult. But I have to believe God has something up his sleeve. He's about to spring on the earth. I believe God has a secret weapon he's about to launch on the world. Do you know what I think that is? Us. It's you. He doesn't have anybody else. Praise God. God needs you. He needs the body of Christ, clear eyed, clear minded, where they belong in the lane they belong in. Too many people trying to fulfill other people's destinies instead of the one God called them to. If you find your tribe, you'll find your destiny. If you find where you're called to be, you're going to be in the lane God marked you for, and you will begin to go where he's called you to be. Many people get vain imaginations about their calling, but Paul said, by the grace given to me, I say to you, as believers in Jesus, we need to know our grace slain, live in it, walk in it, march in it. And I'll tell you what, you don't have to be afraid. As a matter of fact, the spirit showed me many people during this season that were running for other states and trying to move to places so they could still have a shred of resemblance of the America they remember. And the Lord said, that is a mistake because wherever you're called to be, 
wherever that is, whether it's uh, in the vast wastelands of Siberia or whether it's called to be in, you know, California or whether it's called to be in the most conservative belt buckle in the entire nation, wherever God's called you to be is where your protection and your provision is. And that's what God's saying right now. He's saying, don't look at the giant. Look at the gospel and go where you're called to be. Line up with who you're called to be with. And don't be afraid of this thug demon spirit that's trying to intimidate the church to go, what are we going to do? What's going to happen next? Who cares? Preach the gospel. And that's what we got to do. And so the Lord is calling us to rise and shine at this time. He's calling you to do that. Now, I believe we're in a very pivotal valley. I had a vision, and I, I'm sharing a couple things in a row here, because I saw a vision of a line that went straight across the horizon, and I saw the words USA. I saw it go down at a 45-degree angle at this trajectory, 30, 60 to 100-fold into a time of darkness. Praise God. I figured that'd encourage everybody. I saw this time of difficulty and look, I'm a hopeful person. I have faith. I believe the gospel, but I believe the Lord is dealing with inappropriate behavior in the church. He's dealing with inappropriate uh, uh, behavior in the prophetic. He's dealing with all this stuff that's going on in the nation. He's purging out many things where there's been idolatry, sin, all of it. And he's starting at the head through the church and he's bringing it across the land at 30, 60 and a hundred fold. I believe there'll be a season of darkness. And I saw a tornado come into that darkness. And the Lord said to me, don't run from the storm, run to the storm. I need you to run to the storm because the shelter is at the base of the storm. Then on the other side of that, I saw another figure rise up. It was going to be this leader type figure. I'm not even trying to interpret that, but I saw the other side of it. And then on the other end of darkness, I saw the reformers come the reformers, and they would stand up clear-eyed, clear-minded, and raise up an army to say, we don't care about our lives. We love not our lives. We're going to win the lost at any cost. We're going to make disciples, and we are done with our own needs. We're going to make God rich. And how do you do that? By winning souls. And I believe on the other side of this darkness, I saw a return of 30, 60, and 100-fold coming out of this setting. And then I saw the words, the new America. And the new America, I believe, very clearly doesn't mean the better America. It just means different, but new. And I believe that's coming should Jesus tarry. And on that trajectory, I believe we're past 60 fold on this, this scale right now going into this time. But I got hope, great hope because you're here. Jesus is in you. Christ Jesus, the hope of glory resides in you. And we were made for this time. God built you for this time. He needs you to be in obedience and doing what he's marked you for. So in the middle of a present evil age, you know, Galatians 1, 4, it says that it is the will of God that you be delivered from this present evil age. That means God wants you to win even more than you do, but he wants you to do what you're assigned to do. You don't got to shrink back in fear. You don't get to fall into intimidation. You can rise and shine in the middle of a very difficult and dark time. I got to tell you right now, I'm so encouraged because the kingdom of God is getting closer and closer and closer. And as Jesus is returning soon, I believe the days are getting more and more pressurized. That means a few things. Number one, it means we're going to see darkness manifest like we've never seen before. And in addition to darkness manifesting like we've never seen before, it means your gift and your grace is going to work like never before. It means you're going to stand up with superpower against all this wickedness. The devil might come walking over, but he will limp back in Jesus name. It's true. So we got a bunch of wicked lizard overlords trying to take over the planet right now. We've got all them saying it's time for a great reset. We're going to see all these things trying to come on the earth, but you know what? Lift up your eyes. Your redemption draws near. We need to become discipleship making machines. We need to be people that are winning the lost, bringing them into the kingdom. And the Lord will show us things that are to come. But you know what? You don't have to fear it. You don't have to shrink back. You can lean in and press into this hour. And as a matter of fact, right now, there's a haze that's been over many people, a haze of crisis fatigue, a haze of confusion, a haze of drama with all the church drama, with all the religious drama, all all these things, and I believe the Lord is right-sizing the body of Christ right now to be that last day's army to get the mission accomplished. 
If you get busy doing what God's called you to do, you won't be in lack. You won't be missing. You won't have to worry about the favorite teaching you need to go hear or your favorite YouTube prophet. You can go down the road where God is calling you to be. And I'll tell you what, it'll answer the fight inside when you get busy doing what God called you to do. If you do that, the fight inside gets answered and he will go with you to the end of this journey and victory will be there. It's not God's will that you begin to go out with a whimper. As the world gets more and more difficult and people say, you got to do this, you got to vote that way, you got to go here, you got to do X, Y, or Z. Listen to me. God's not nervous. You know, when things begin to go crazy in the world, the lights don't start dimming in heaven. Oh, he's a, Gabriel, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know, he doesn't do that. If you need a breakthrough in your life, God is not having a meltdown. Well, you've asked for more than one thing. What am I supposed to do about that? God's going to meet you where you are right now. I right now in Jesus name come into agreement with the word of the Lord and begin to come against this crisis fatigue. Those of you watching this broadcast right now, I come against crisis fatigue where it has assaulted your children. It's assaulted your mind. It's tried to rip up your family. I resist that in Jesus name. And we release the power of God over you and your house. As for you and your house, you will serve the Lord. Let me also say this. There's a sickness that's trying to get in people's physical bodies and the Lord is bringing a healing to many of you right now I have not felt such an anointing for healing as I felt lately I sense the Lord healing long COVID in people I sense the Lord healing the effects of what has happened in this last season there is a healing anointing and he's taking confusion away from you in the process praise God I'm looking at this woman right here in this middle aisle, you're all the way at the end of the aisle. Woman, would you please stand up where you are? No, uh, in the, the blue here. Please stand up. I want to say something to you. I saw an assault against your mind. I saw an assault go against your body and even your thyroid. And I command the strength of God to begin to turn that and right size it. I see fiery darts that are being removed from you physically, like in your physical body. And there's been this almost um, PTSD thing that happens with you and no rest is available. No rest, no rest, no rest. And anxiety has built up. And I say in the name of Jesus, that leaves you right now. Let let go of her right now in Jesus name right now in the name of the Lord there was a time you had such an appreciation for art and tapestry and this has taken all your bandwidth and you haven't been able to look at those things and appreciate some of the things you once were able to really enjoy and the Lord is saying you're gonna enjoy and vibrance will come back into your sight in the name of Jesus but I saw a war come against your mind and against your soul. It came through a relationship and God is healing all of that right now. Praise God. I speak life over you in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's happening. That's happening. Shackles are leaving you right now. The shackles are dropping right now. Many of you are going to have this crisis fatigue begin to leave you right now. It's going right now. The Spirit of the Lord is making a way. Healing in your body is manifesting right, wow, right now. The glory of the Lord. You're going to outgrow the yoke at 30, 60, and 100 fold. Isaiah 10, 27. And the anointing will cause the yoke to lift off your shoulder, loosen from your neck, and be destroyed because of that anointing that's happening to you right now. The presence and the glory of the Lord is touching people right now. Thank you, Jesus. Sir, you got a light coat on. And there was strength that happened with a business. I saw things took place there. Part of it went away a season ago. I see God beginning to restore and build back up from the ground and giving you a new foundation. It was like a, a crack went through it and a fault came through it and it split apart. And the Lord is saying, and now I am the God who restores and I'm going to bring back a restoration unto you and it shall be mighty. And plan B will be better than plan A in Jesus name. And that that's a multiple part word for you that's socially and that's relationally and that's in a number of areas and in your business walk in Jesus name I see God restoring and healing that whole scenario in the name of the Lord thank you father in Jesus name in Jesus name there is a stirring in the spirit of God there's a stirring in the spirit of God thank you father 
At first it was no and no, and then it's yes. There was two no's and now there'll be one yes. And I see the Lord saying, just because there was delay, just because there was issues, doesn't mean anything. You're gonna come through it. And this assault that's come against your mind is over with in Jesus' name. As we're talking about healing and all of that, I release healing over your family, over your life, over everything that's going on in Jesus' name. There's an anointing. Whatever you need to take from the presence of God with healing, I want you to receive it right now. I want you to lay hands on yourself right now. Healing, creative miracles right now. The creative miracles of God right now. Oh yeah. The creative miracles of God. Organs are being touched right now. Thank you, Jesus. If you will do the difficult, God will do the impossible. Some of you are going to be faced with a difficult assignment and the Lord saying it's the doorway to your impossible. There's a breakthrough happening. There's light shining in darkness. There's victory. Sir, I saw the words counted out, was counted out, counted aside, put to the side. And the Lord says, but not on my watch, not on my calling, not on the mantle I've given him. And I see that there was a, you know, I'll use it this way. It's not rejection, it's protection. And I see God working this process out in you and he's going to begin to align you to the right opportunity at the right time with the right conversation. And when the conversation manifests, you're going to have a witness in your spirit and favor will multiply. So the true analogy for you is one door has closed, but there is a whole nother avenue opening and you haven't fully seen that yet. And it will appear to you. It's going to manifest because the Lord has willed it for you. And I see strength arising in that picture, in that capacity. There was a conversation about moving to another territory. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying no to that. You are to remain where I have planted you. You need to finish what you started. And I will begin to open up an avenue that's new to you. And it shall be well in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. The goodness of the Lord. I believe America is in serious trouble. And I know many people are prophesying, no, it's rainbows and sunshine and gumdrops and rivers of chocolate, and it's going to be wonderful. Well, I believe the Lord desires that for every nation. But what I want to say at this time is that we need to watch Israel. Now, whatever happens or the way the politics go and all that is one thing. And there's people doing what people do. They maneuver, they do things, whatever. I'm talking about the covenant blessing between the nation of America, the land of Israel, between any nation that blesses Jerusalem. We need to stand for that in Jesus' name because there is life, there is victory, and God is calling many to arise and shine at this time. I believe there is many more for us than there are against us. This is another thing I sense for the body of Christ at this time, that many people think, where are they? Where are the reinforcements? Where are they at? What's going on? But yet there are 7,000 more just like you. Just like you. And as the wars and rumors of wars start to really get going, you know, it's, it's unique. There's been times that I haven't seen things prophetically and then it starts to happen and I haven't seen it, but other people see it and then it happens. And then there's times I see things in advance and other people don't see it and then it happens. And we just need to do our part in the body. And I can tell you this, I've seen this word decapolis and I believe that it is a prophetic word that has to do with symbolically 10 cities burning, Deca. And this is serious because we know there are foreign troops on the soil. We know there's foreign adversaries on this soil. But I also believe there can be a turn of events. There can be a stopping and a way-making anointing that begins to break through and expose. So right now in Jesus' name, we come into agreement for exposure on this mess. We come into agreement for clarity in the name of the Lord. 
And we call those clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers to the forefront to begin to stand up and say, not today, how about you move to the darkness? Thank you, Jesus. Woman of God in the very back, God's given you a mind to cipher, a mind to edit, a mind to put information together, a mind to administrate. And you have all kinds of clerical and abilities on you that you can create and bring order out of chaos. And there's been a lot fighting you and pressing you into a place where it's been almost uh, putting you in a corner, so to speak. And the Lord is absolutely removing the bonds of that. And you're going to begin to see a freedom and a liberty you've not experienced in some time. And it's coming to you even now, even now. I saw you speaking with, I believe it was a grandmother. I saw these words coming from her and I saw the words of life coming and then change has happened. And the spirit of the Lord is saying unto you, you are carrying a mantle for your family. And the mantle for your family is to break them out of captivity. It's to break them out and it'll come through intercession and demonstration. And God's hand is on your life and the very presence of God is on your life right now. The presence of God is on you. He's with you. He's here. He's here. You guys know that when you're praying to Jesus, it's a local call, right? It's not long distance. We don't got to cry out and beg and plead. It's a local call. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You're walking around loaded. And it's time we weaponized our faith to do what he called us to do. Meaning we just believe the Bible. Meaning we just do what he says. We stand up and we're counted at this time. The Lord has marked you on a bad day. Listen to me. On a bad day, you're anointed to be the very best there is. I was with an Obama appointed uh, leader. He was an ambassador to another nation. I was at this dinner with them and they, he and his family began to debate me on why, why they were agnostic. We don't know if God's real. We don't know this, but we think politically, you just kind of need to go with the flow with whatever that kind of thing. And we're going down the road and they said, we don't really know if God is real or not. And suddenly the spirit of the Lord came on my life and the Lord said, tell him. And so I began to minister to his whole family. By the time we were done, his son said, I want to know Jesus. And then I looked at this man, this powerful man, and I began to tell him everything about his life by the unction of the Holy Spirit. And when we were done, this powerful man pounded his fist on the table and he said, how do you know these things? And I said, because, sir, a man with a revelation is never at the mercy of someone with an argument. And I said, and you need to come to Jesus. And that's happened over and over again in my life. And God's doing it with you. God will send you on your assignment. He will send you where you're called to be. And I'll tell you what. God wants to use your life more than you want him to. God wants you healed more than you want to be healed. He wants you going down the avenue you're called to go down more than you want it. It's time to surrender. It's time to repent of the mess and continue coming into what he's called you to do. And by repenting, we turn and we're doing everything he's marked us for. Turn away from all the stuff and continue following Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I believe in this. I believe my part in the body, maybe your part too. It's to raise up a million clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers to go win a billion converts. A million for a billion. Let's go get them. Let's build the kingdom. Praise God. And there's going to find, you're going to find supernatural, raw, spiritual horsepower on you for this hour. There's a new horsepower. You're going to reach in the closet with new garments. It's coming now. It's coming. Well, praise God.